Welcome to the Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. I am Kim McLaughlin, your host. I help people when they're feeling overwhelmed, overloaded, and it shows up in overeating and dieting. And I help people find a place of peace with food. And today we're talking about another wellness tool. Last week we talked about journaling as a wellness tool. And this week, another wellness tool we're going to go over is journaling with prompts. This is a fabulous fabulous tool that I highly recommend that you start using if you've never done it before. We're going to look today at four ways to get journaling, look at my number one gift I got from my writing coach, and six journaling questions that'll help get you started. If you haven't signed up for the Am I an Emotional Eater quiz, I highly recommend that you do that now. It's listed in the show notes. It's also on my website at feedyoursoulunlimited.com. You'll find it easily there. Click on the the button and get that quiz because it will help you determine whether emotional eating is a problem for you. Last week on our podcast, we talked about the first of many wellness tools I'm going to go over on this podcast, and we talked about journaling, and we talked about the idea of conscious journaling and using journaling through the idea of morning pages, which I learned from Julia Cameron. I'll put the link in the show notes for you to listen to that podcast if you're interested in learning about that journaling tool. Today, I want to talk a little further about journaling, and this is a journaling method I love to use, and it's called journaling with prompts. And I do this a lot. I enjoy this prompt um, kind of journaling because it gives me a focus and it helps me to pick some categories that I want to focus on in terms of my journaling. What I talked about last week, and and I just want to reiterate it this week, is some basic tenets to the practice of of journaling. And these are the ones that I learned from Julia Cameron. Once again, she's in The Artist. She wrote this book called The Artist's Way, and she describes her daily practice called The Morning Pages. And some of the tenets of this practice is write in your journal daily, write three pages in your journal, and have that writing be handwritten um, and not on the computer. So it's really using the the pen to paper, so to speak, as your way of writing. It's a different kind of, I think it's a different kind of access in your brain when you do typing. And we type a lot. And, you know, that writing is really old school and kind of that um, body, mind, spirit kind of movement. So another tenant that she talks about is she talks about writing when you wake up in the morning. I'd say that that's a nice idea. I don't always um, do that today. I got up, I got ready, I went to the gym, and then I did my writing when I got home from the gym. So it was not first thing in the morning. It was later in the morning. So I, I figure if I'm writing at some point during the day, I'm... I'm going to call that good. So I like the idea of doing it in the morning, but that just doesn't always work well for me. And also it hasn't always worked well for my clients. So journal when you can. The last tenet is writing without stopping. So it's really putting your pen to the paper and just writing, 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 and not having cross outs, not worrying about punctuation, not worried about spelling, not worried about how the... um, how it sounds on the page. It's really about keeping the pen moving. I find for me that three pages longhand without cross outs with when I keep writing takes me about 10 minutes. And as I've talked about before, we all have 10 minutes. You can find 10 minutes in your day that you can write and that you can journal. And I'm writing or I'm um, talking about this journaling as a wellness tool again today because I really 
found this last week that I had so many ahas, so many breakthroughs in terms of ideas of things that I wanted to do and understanding things more through the journaling. And every time I start, if I stop and I start back to my journaling and I journal on a regular basis, I really find I have these breakthroughs and I feel so much better. So it's been good for me to talk about journaling, to talk about it on this podcast. And I wrote about it for my blog also because it reminds me that I want to keep journaling because it's good for me. When I, when I say it's good for you for your wellness tool, it's also good for me for my wellness tool. So that's my my plug for, for journaling. Um, today, we're going to talk about a different practice than what Julia Cameron talks about. And this is a journaling practice that I learned on a writing retreat, which I've actually been on quite a few writing retreats with uh, my writing coach, Laura Davis. And Laura Davis is an extraordinary writer. And she co-wrote the seminal book on childhood sexual abuse called The Courage to Heal. I got that book way back in the day through my studies as being a therapist. And I was so honored to be in her in her seminar and learn from her about writing because she's a really good writing teacher and writing coach. And so I put links to her website in the show notes. Um, LauraDavis.net is her is her URL. Check her out, please. She's so good, and she's so good at being a writing coach. What I learned from some guidelines from Laura from my retreats with her are some things that I think will help you out too. One of the things I learned from Laura is that your journal doesn't have to be pretty. I, I talked about this last week in my in the podcast, and I wanted to go over it a little bit more because I've had this idea before that, you know, you buy a pretty journal, it has a pretty cover, the paper's so beautiful, and I never wanted to put in any kind of the crap that was in my head in that journal because it's so pretty, so I'd save the journal for the good stuff. Well, for me, when I'm journaling, there generally isn't good stuff. It's always stuff that I've got to get out and, and get out of my head. So one of the things I found that works really well for me is the spiral bound, the inexpensive spiral bound journal that you can get at any local store. And I like it because there's spiral bound because you can flip it over and have one page in front of you. If um, kind of those nicer journals, they have it where you flip it open, you have the two pages. You can't um, put, you know, one page behind the other like you can with the spiral journal. And I really like that because I like having just that one page in front of me. So I found those spiral journals just in terms of um, what I like to have in front of me. It works really well. The other thing I've done in the past is I've used um, spiral journals that have no lines in them. And I've liked that because I might like to draw, I might like to do some something different in my journal. And so the ones without lines on them have worked well for me. Right now I'm doing all of my journaling on paper that is lined. So that's another thing you can do is go lined versus unlined paper. But your journal just is something. And as I shared last week, that um, sometimes I just get pieces of paper out. If I'm gone and I don't have a journal in front of me, I'll just get pieces of paper and do my journaling just on those and then um, rip them up so that nobody can read them. And that leads me into my second uh, guideline is keep your inner thinking private. So this is the time where it's really personal and it's things that I don't necessarily want to share with anybody else. I can share afterwards maybe some insights that I've got from it, but it's really my private time for me. And I don't want anybody to read any of that. It used to be a long time ago, um, I was afraid that when I was, there was some stuff tough stuff going on and I would write it in my journal and I would actually put on the front of my journal, you know, if you're reading this, if you're looking in this journal and I'm not around, I was afraid that if I died that maybe some of you would find my journal and um, read it. And I just said, I put on the front of it, I said, if you're reading this and I'm not around, out of respect for me, please um, toss this journal because if, if it was something I wanted you to know about, I would have told you. So that was a way I could write really, really personal stuff in my journal and not feel concerned that somebody might read it. 
Hi guys, this is Kim, and I want to let you know that the Emotional Eating Solutions eight-week course is open now. You can find it on my website at feedyoursoulunlimited.com. Go to the Work With Kim tab and click on that. This is the time to get peace with food, and I know this course will help you. You also can find the link in the show notes to the Emotional Eating Solutions eight-week self-study course. The third idea that I got from Laura was in our classes in the retreat, what she would do is she would give us these prompts and she would give us a really small, reasonable amount of time to write. And it was about, generally about 10 minutes. And there was it was interesting to me because 10 minutes didn't feel like too much, but it didn't feel too little. It was really a nice amount of time uh, we would build up for longer periods of time to write but I found that 10 minutes a day especially if you're not used to journaling it really was so helpful because then that rebel side of me that said oh I don't have enough time to write that rebel side could be put aside because we all can find 10 minutes you're going to find 10 minutes and if you keep the pen moving for those 10 minutes you're going to get a lot written there's going to be a lot that's come out so don't don't discount the idea that small amounts of time, 10 minutes, is enough time to get some really good stuff written down in your journal and get some ideas out of your head that might be bothering you. One of the greatest gifts I got from my writing retreats with Laura Davis was learning to just write the worst crap ever. And I found that so encouraging coming from a woman who is you know, a best-selling author has written books that she's been on Oprah. So she has been well known for her writing and that she would say to us in her group, just write the works crap ever that we needed to get that, that all the stuff out of our head, especially if you're going to be a writer um, and write more things, books and articles, that if you just get that that stuff in your head out that it's so freeing and it and it's not about having any kind of writing that anybody reads it's about getting out of your head and that was one of the best gifts that I've ever gotten and I I remember that to this day that I just write down the worst crap ever on, in my journal that all the stuff in my head and it's it's very freeing another technique that Laura taught me that I really like is the idea of journaling through answering a question. And I'm going to give you in a little bit some ideas of those questions because they're really something that you can really design yourself. So the idea is, is that you would take a question. So there's a question that we give and then you keep writing and answering that question until nothing else comes to you or until 10 minutes. So you start a new paragraph with that same question every time. So one of the questions I have here, an example of a question is, I feel most free when I, and then you just say, I feel most free when I am outside in the sun, enjoying spending time with other people, period. If I can't think of anything else to say, I go to the next paragraph and I say, I feel most free when I, and then I write a little bit more. And when I can't think of anything else, put a period I go to the next period, uh, paragraph. I feel most free when I. What I found is that starting every paragraph with I feel most free when I gives me this opportunity to go deeper and deeper and move beyond that blocking point that stops me from understanding what's really going on for myself. And it, it takes me to a deeper spot where I get to that kind of aha the, oh, now I get what's going on. Now I get what's what's happening with me. And it's really a, a extraordinary way to journal. So I wanted to give you some ideas. I have huge lists of, um, on social media, if you ever DM want to DM me, I'll give you some more lists of, um, of these ideas. So here are some questions that you could use in your journaling. And I have them written out there on the show notes so then you can look and, and use any of them and obviously make any any up that you want to use. But here are some examples. One is, I feel most free when I. Another one, I am most afraid. Another, my fears keep me from. 
another, I love myself most when I, and one I really love, which is super interesting, my childhood kitchen was, and so my childhood kitchen was, and then you write about it and put a period on it, and then the next paragraph, my childhood kitchen was, and it it takes you into that deeper perspective of yourself. And what I find is this kind of journaling brings up, for me, a greater self-awareness, which really is why I journal. It's why I take out the paper and, and put pen to paper. Um, what, what Laura would say also when we were in our writing retreats, and she'd say, you know, put it to paper. We'd start explaining it verbally, and she'd say, put it to the paper. And that putting it to the paper actually gets you to that deeper spot in that understanding. So I really encourage you to put what's going on to paper, put it down on paper and see what comes up. Once I got over the idea that my writing had to be about um, being for other people or to write where other people had to read it, it felt like a freer way to write and a freer way to express myself. So I really encourage you to try this style of journaling and see what it does for you. So why don't we do that as a doable this week? Try out the journaling with prompts and write out a few prompts, use any of these prompts and just start journaling with prompts. See what it gets you and see what kind of understanding or kind of deeper idea you get about yourself. Your prompts can be about anything, any fear that you're having, any feeling that you have, any person. I, I'm angry at my husband when he, and then you can write all about that. I am scared to take the next step and then write about that. And so your prompts can be related to whatever's going on in your life for you to help, for you to get that deeper understanding. So Give that a try this week. Make that your doable. And I look forward to hearing how you all do. Um, like, look me up on social media. Um, I have some links. And let me know what's going on because I'd really love to know how this works for you. This is Kim McLaughlin from Feed Your Soul with Kim. I really enjoy spending this time with you. And I look forward to talking with you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. We come to you every Monday with fresh new ideas to help you end emotional eating and put food in its proper place as nourishment. Please be sure to subscribe to this podcast and review it and let us know what you think. Thank you for joining us.